Hey there, I'm Charlotte, the Gulf Coast Granny. Today I'm gonna show you how I make a recipe that I call Poor Mom's Lasagna. All you need is a package of Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. Doesn't matter what kind, doesn't matter what shape, you can get it super cheap. You need a little bit of ground beef, not a lot. In fact, I'm gonna take what I've got here and cut it in half and just use that. That way I've got enough left over for another meal and that was one pound. I'm gonna let this ground beef get browned. And the next thing that you'll need is a can or a jar, whatever kind of spaghetti sauce you have. If you have some leftover in the fridge, use it. The first time I ever made this recipe, I was a single mom of five children. And the week between Christmas and payday, which was January 1st, that's when my child support came in and that's when I bought all my groceries for the month. It was very, very difficult. On the last day before payday, I had a little bit of hamburger left in my freezer, a box of this, and a half a jar of pizza sauce sitting in the fridge waiting on me. And I thought, what in the world am I going to make? This is what I made. Now, I have some mozzarella cheese because I think that just adds to it. The first time I made this recipe, I did not have mozzarella cheese. It tasted fine. The kids liked it. I'm going to add a little bit this time, but you don't have to. I'm cooking the macaroni and cheese just like it says on the package. I'm also going to add a little bit of garlic powder, salt, and pepper to this ground beef. Now, this recipe fed my five kids. I ate what was left over on their plates. But it was enough to feed all five of my kids. They were young. Let's see, my oldest daughter was about 12, maybe 11. The other daughter was eight. My son was seven. And then I had two babies that were about one and two, two and three. But this did feed all of them. I also always had a loaf of bread in the house. So I would serve it with bread, with some butter and garlic powder, and I'd put it in the oven and toast it. Now I've drained this ground beef because it was the cheap kind, and it had a lot of grease in it. The next thing I'm going to do is add half of this can of spaghetti sauce to this ground beef. You don't want it too thin. I don't like a chunky, thick spaghetti sauce. Now, you can add onions to this, green peppers to this, whatever you have. But again, I'm making this recipe almost exactly the way I made it back when I had absolutely nothing. I set my oven for 400 degrees. I'm going to spray this loaf pan here, a little bit of olive oil spray, and set it aside. Now when I was poor with those babies, I always had milk, so that wasn't a problem for me. Ha I mean, having milk on hand was not a problem for me. Back in the day, I probably spent 20% of my budget on milk, because those babies drank a lot of it. Just about finished. My sauce is good and prepared. And I'm about to show you what we're gonna do next. You know, there's a lot of foods that I had to eat back then that I would never eat again, Spam being one of them. Vienna sausages being another. I hate them. But this is actually good. And I've made it throughout the years for the rest of the kids. And uh, they tend to like it, so I'm making it for dinner tonight. So now what we're gonna do so we're going to layer this, just like you would lasagna. Take a spoonful of that, stick it in the bottom, and a spoonful of this, maybe a couple. See there? Put some mozzarella cheese on. And don't forget, you don't have to use that. If you don't have it, leave it out.
and then top it with the rest of your sauce. A little bit more cheese. Now since all of these ingredients are already cooked, all you really have to do is stick it in the oven long enough for everything to get all melty together. And if you have a tomato, stick that on top to make it pretty. Now you could doctor this up with basil, all the herbs you want that you have. And I have often done that throughout the years, just added different stuff to it. I would definitely recommend sticking it on a small cookie sheet so that it doesn't bubble over into your bottom of your stove. So we're going to stick this in here. And I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes and clean up this mess. Y'all, it's been over 20 years since I've had to cook like this. But don't think that I don't remember for one second. Going through poverty is something that leaves a mark on a person. And it teaches you lessons and frugality and how to cook to feed a family on a little bit of nothing. I want y'all to see this up close and personal. That looks like a decent meal, doesn't it? Yes, I used packaged foods, pre-packaged, but it'll keep your belly full at night. And when you don't have a lot, that's the goal. I hope that I can help somebody by making this recipe. If you're struggling here in this week between Christmas and the first of the year when you might get a paycheck or a child support check, Go ahead and check out my playlist. It's called um, Recipes to Make When You're Broke. And I'll put it in a box over here, I think, on the side, one of these sides. So that way you can take a look at all of my recipes that I've made. It's been a while since I've posted one. But I thought that this time of year, it's probably necessary. You know, there's families out there who spend everything they had to buy their kids something for Christmas or their wife or their parents. And they might be on a really strict budget right now and this is a way to eat while you're on that strict budget if it's just one person my goodness that's dinner for three or four nights at least for me it is I know some grown men out there that could eat the whole thing poppy but you have a great day and I'll talk to you again real soon all right